Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You make my life so beautiful. And I still you have made me here now. That's why I love you forever. You make my life so beautiful. And I see why you have made me here now. There's nothing greater than me. That's why I love you forever. I was glad when the sea let us go into the house of the Lord. For me, there is nothing more than God's presence. And I, I want more of God all the time. I hope I'm saying the same for you. Do you want more of God? At a time like this, do you want more of God? After all the sacrifices, all what he's been doing daily for you and I, do you really want more of God? Well, I'm so glad anytime it is an opportunity to reach out, opportunity to be used of God in this um, particular style to bring to us his message is something I I hold in high esteem because I'm humbled that I have the privilege 
I'm humbled that God chose me. I'm humbled that I have you out there to listen to it because what is the word when there's no one to listen to it? So I, I don't take you all for granted. I appreciate you all, those of you that are on this page. I tell you, I don't take it for granted at all. Because at a time like this where people are very judgmental, yes, some people don't want to just get, get, um, wrap their heads around the fact that you're no longer who you used to be, all right? But um, that doesn't change anything because we are called of God to do God's work, to focus on God and let God do the remaining. I think that's a word for someone. Yes, regardless of what they are calling you, regardless of how they have tagged you because of your past, I want to encourage you that you are called of God to do God's work. So you need to focus on God and let God do his part. Yeah, very, very important for someone to have that at the back of his mind. Well, today we're going to be talking about the acceptable evangelism. Yes, the acceptable evangelism by God, of course. And um, what we also should look at. And it's important for some of you that are watching this for the first time. We have been doing this for a while, starting from my friend's Facebook page to the Sanctuary Heritage page and the, what informed these over years of waiting on God is the fact that God wants us, his children, to receive what he has for us. Now, the concern at the place of prayer, what God told me is that it's beginning to look as if sin, the enemy, is more, more, I mean, enticing, more profitable to mankind. And so um, many people have decided, in fact, people in the church, so many people in the church have decided to to a mix, a kind of mix um, um, godly things with worldly things in that, you know, you hear people giving excuses of how are we going to survive. Now, this is what informed this whole broadcast because God said, go tell my people, that I made the word and I made rules, regulations, others. And these are the things I look out for. Principles, these are the things I look out for. So for as many that would key into it and do it, I would give them, I would pour out my blessings upon them as it were. And part of, of our working scripture for this particular broadcast is um, Joel chapter 2 verse 28, where God says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions now that is that is the bedrock of what we are doing because god made me to understand that we are now in that season now the season of the prophetic the season where god wants to dwell the god wants to talk to us one on one he wants um, um, us to accept him, he wants to dwell in us, he wants to use us as sanctuaries. We are we are sanctuary heritage. So that is the whole idea of these. And um, when he told me, go, go talk to, go work with, go unite with sanctuary heritage. These are people that carry God on the inside of them and do godly things. That is what it is all about. And I want you to know that the main fact that you decided to stay on this page then you are a sanctuary heritage you your body is the temple of god you carry god on the inside of you and christ in us is our hope of glory now the good news is what cannot happen to christ cannot happen to you the last i heard he, he his blood is shielding us so what cannot pass through the blood and the last i heard the enemy has no power to pass through the blood so what cannot pass through the blood cannot get to us. So it's important that we have that at the back of our mind. Yes, very, very important. Now we're going to be looking at evangelism. We've been hearing evangelism over and over again, which is preaching the word of God, declaring the word of God, spreading the gospel. It could be publicly, it could be personally, and all evangelism. Now the acceptable 
evangelism. God has a word for us today. And I pray that as you listen, you will be blessed and you will also share the good news. Something in you will come up so that you can also key into what God is doing concerning evangelism. Everlasting Father God, I thank you. I give you all the glory and honor. Thank you for as many that are on this page, as many that are watching all of this broadcast. I know it is not by accident when your word comes out, it will achieve that which is as meant for that life, that person, that group of people, that ministry, that nation, that this word is meant to our Father stir up something on the inside of them. I pray it will be done and it will be activated in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against any plan of the enemy to steal this word away from us as a result of any fruit of, of the evil one concerning jealousy, envy, or doubt, whatever it is. I pray that your spirit will convince these ones that are listening so that they would hear what you have to say. They would not look at me, but they would hear who is behind me and they will have a conviction in their spirit to do the right thing and to like align themselves so that they can be blessed at a time like this. God, I worship you. I give you all the glory and honor because you said as we do that which you have told us to do, you would bless us. May your blessings, O oh God, come upon us and dwell amongst us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So going straight ahead to what we're going to be doing today, it's important that we know, if you look around us now, that the enemy is not resting concerning evangelism. Now we think that we are the only ones doing evangelism, but I've come to announce to you that the enemy is also doing his own style. Now, for every positive, the enemy does a negative. Now, as we are expected to spread the good news, the enemy is also spreading the bad news. You would accept, uh, agree with me that when you look at the internet, you look at the television, you look at everything, social media, it is one bad news after the other. In fact, people, Christians, now celebrate bad news. Yes, when you go and say Jesus loves you, you, you will be shocked that you would have like two likes. But you just say, oh, breaking news. Oh, this man did this to his daughter. Oh, that man did this to his wife. And then you will see a million views. And then you wonder what is really happening in our society. What is happening? Well, this is the bedrock. This is the reason why we're bringing this out to you today. We're talking about acceptable evangelism. And we're going to be looking at it from the story of the Good Samaritan. The story of the Good Samaritan taken from Luke chapter 10 from verse 30 to 37. Luke chapter 10 from verse 30 to 37. So just if you have your Bible there, you can turn over with me and let's do this together. Now, and Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pens and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I repay thee. 36. Which now of this tree, Jesus asked him, thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do likewise. Hallelujah. May God bless his reading in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. The story of the good Samaritan. Now, it's important that we know that God is reminding us in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, that all authority in heaven has been given or, and on earth has been given to us. So we are expected to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that the, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I will be with you always to the end of the age. When I saw that scripture in, prepara in preparation for this particular broadcast, I told myself, all this, this is the habit of God, evangelism. When you go through the scripture, you say, go ye, go ye, go ye into the world. It is a commission. Now, when you look at that same Luke chapter 10 that we talked about, the Lord commissioned 70 elders to go and preach the gospel. At a time like this, this is God's habit. The enemy is not resting. People are, people are dying every day. The world needs to know that there is a good news. You know why? It's not just about the, the earth as it were. It's for them to know that in Christ you don't die. There is eternal life. As I would always say, this is the only religion that you don't die when you're in Christ. You just move from life to eternal life. Hallelujah. It is the only religion that has a reason savior. So we have something great to offer people. The best gift you can give to anyone is the gift of Jesus. Powerful. It is a gift of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, looking at at Matthew chapter 9, God reminded us, he said, the harvest is plentiful, but the, verse 37, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of harvest to send out laborers unto the harvest. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And God made me to understand that the laborers are few because we have decided to just limit ourselves and just move, shift blames to other people. You, the outpour of the Spirit is upon all flesh. You can also evangelize. You can also tell someone about Jesus. The times of, okay, it's just this person has passed. As long as you're listening to me, you also can be a vessel of honor. God made me to understand that title and all that has really, really failed. All he wants now is yielded vessels to use for his work. Because he has no delight in the death of sinners. We need to understand that the bedrock of all this is our soul. is eternity. It doesn't end here. So God wants us to be saved. We need to also understand that there is another power contending with what we have, what we are supposed to possess as God's children. And that's why God brought us the word today in the Good Samaritan, the story about the Good Samaritan. Now what he wants us to understand from here is that we're going to be taking one after the other. From verse 30, says, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. We stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. He fell among thieves. Now the greatest thief I've ever known is John is in John chapter 10, verse 10. And that is the devil. The thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It's about I have come to give them life and give them life more abundantly. So it's important that we know that there's an ongoing war where we are now in this world. There is an ongoing war. The enemy is fighting the thief. Now here, um, the certain man, it doesn't matter his name, it doesn't matter where he's coming from. But what matters most is that a man fell among thieves. Now there are so many people that have fallen among thieves. In fact, are already fallen among thieves because the thief is not resting. The Bible made us to understand that he moves day and night. He moves like a roaring lion, looking for who to devour. That means he is bent on his number one focus, who to devour. To steal, to kill, and destroy is his mandate. So for us to be able to, to, to do more, for us to be able to beat him to his game, then we need to be focused and we need to be dedicated. A certain man. He was wounded. There are so many people that have been wounded, that are wounded out there because of life situation, the economy, betrayal. 
wounded, stripped of what they, what they have. Some people, because of the love they even have for God, fell into wrong hands. Some people, what is rightfully theirs, spiritually is being taken from them day and night. They are suffering for what they don't even know about. Now God is calling our attention to these ones that have fallen, that the thieves, they are fallen victims. For what? As a result of birth, as a result of nationality, and the rest, they, somewhere along the line, they have fallen. Now this is where God's focus is right now in this season. So we need to, we need to also focus. God called David a man after his heart. We need to, we need to focus on the things of God, the things that are after his heart. They left him dead. I don't know who I'm talking to out there. But any situation that looks as if it has left you dead, God is bringing life to it in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't want to know what the story is, but I've come to tell you that there's someone that has the glory. So for that story, he's bringing in glory now in the mighty name of Jesus. All you need to do is just accept it. That no matter what the thief has stolen, there is redemption. He came to give up. that God is coming now into that situation. He's coming now to give you life in the mighty name of Jesus. Going further in verse 30, where he said, And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, and by chance, hallelujah, God made me to understand by chance, the souls are not in the four walls of our churches. By chance, we will meet them. There might be that person sitting next to you. There might be that boss in your office. By chance, we don't prepare for where the souls are. God has put the souls out there in the world. He, if we are focused on them, we will see them by chance. Yes, we might not be prepared for them. That is the reason why we need to live prepared. We need to walk as God's sanctuaries. We need to walk as God's tabernacle. Because we don't know where we are going to meet them. We don't know who is watching. We don't know where the souls are. But he's going to send us. So we should ask God, where do we send the souls? The four walls of the church. It's really, really stopping this, our mentality. That it has to be okay when I'm in a group that I will, evang I will evangelize. There, this is not... This is not what it should be hallelujah by chance by chance he didn't even prepare for it he just stumbled yes those people that are wounded we might by chance just meet them have you ever been in a situation where you see somebody telling you about what he or she has gone through and you're wondering oh why is she telling me yes she's telling you because it is by chance god is using by chance style to bring people your way so that you can profess christ to them so that you can tell them of the good news and so that their lives will be saved hallelujah and then the priest hallelujah the priest that the priest came down that way and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. No. He saw him, he passed by the other side. The priest, by all standards, the priest is, should be the mouthpiece of God. By all standards, the priest should be a representative of God. Now, the priest in this story represents us Christians, represents our leaders, represents um, the people that are supposed to carry the light. Yes, hallelujah. We that know the word. So, by chance, we stumble. By chance, the priest came and he passed by the side. You know what God told me? He said, because the priest feels that he has to operate within his church. Hallelujah. I've had encounters where people see me and they say, come to our church. That is the bedrock of the evangelism. I say, I'm a Christian. So it doesn't matter. Just come and have another encounter. How are we moving Christians from Christians and we call it evangelism? And the souls that are perishing are in the clubs and the byways and the highways. How do we marry that? What are we going to tell God at the end of the day that we did not know where the word is coming out to all of us today? We should know. Yes, we should know that the souls are out there. There are people that have not even heard about Jesus. There are people that are in other religion, not even knowing what they are doing. Now, that is the reason why God expects us to go as light into darkness. But the walls of the church, the walls that we have built as Christians as a result of doctrine and religion, the priest, he passed by. He, I, 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 I can safely say the priest was heading to the tabernacle. Whereas the walk he had passed the walk on the road. Hallelujah. What God expected him to do, he had passed by. But he was heading to where he thought the work would be done. 
How did we miss it? There are so many people right now that feel, okay, oh yes, I'm in church, I do this, I do that. From their home, they will not talk to anybody. In the, in the bus, they will not talk to anybody. The past where people are hurting, no, I am going, I have, I have, I, I have an event to attend, I have a department to man. I'm not saying that is bad. But I'm saying that God is going to be bringing souls by chance to us. And when you miss it, God will ask you. Because there are some people that have met people by chance. Maybe the thoughts came to your mind. Maybe you were there when they were doing that thing. Maybe that person is your child, your relation. You didn't tell them anything. God will ask us for the blood of that person if that person perishes. I don't know who I'm talking to, but it is time. That person that you've been saying that, oh, this road will lead this person to destruction. That you avoid it. It's time to go back and tell them. Let them hate you. But by chance, say it. God is putting it on your heart for a reason. That person might not go to church to hear the word of God. The person might hear the word from your mouth and be saved. We need to do the right thing. And so he said, Father, Lord, I thank you. He said he passed by. Child of God, may we not pass by our assignments. Because you must not have a ministry to have a ministry. I, I saw a man of God mention that and it, it really touched me. All the style of, oh, it has to be a platform, has really, really taken us far away from what God wants us to do. No, we need to come back to the basis. It is soul. It is God's children. It is not your members. They are God's people. Hallelujah. We will not pass by our assignments in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We will not pass by our assignments in the mighty name of Jesus. Going further, he said, Thank you, Jesus. He said, And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked unto him and passed by on the other side. A Levite. Now, God made me to understand that if you check the story of the Levite, Moses was from the tribe of Levi. Moses was from the tribe of Levi. And Aaron also was from the tribe of Levi. Now, if you check Exodus chapter 2 verse 1, you see that. And in Numbers chapter 1 verse 50, where God appointed the Levi to take care of the tabernacle. These are the people that supposedly were to, were to um, watch out for the law. Now, God made me to understand that Jesus has broken the course of the law. There are people that are still in that place of the law. Now, these are people that are very, very judgmental. You will agree with me. That the greatest problem of the gospel today is religion and doctrine and beliefs. It has hindered the move of the spirits. People no longer want to listen. People don't even want the flow because it will be different. Christians are fighting for religion, fighting themselves. Whereas the devil, who does not have any, any um, barrier, he just knows that he wants the soul. No walls. Yes, no walls. He doesn't, who told you that the devil doesn't have temple? When was the last time somebody said, come and follow us to our temple? That is not his priority because you know, in the spirit realm, there is no barrier. So anywhere you are, he can operate. That is how for every counterfeit of the enemy, we need to understand that there is a secret of God in it. There is no barrier in the spirit realm. That is how God wants us to operate. A Levite, those in charge, those that are supposed to, those that God walked through, also came and passed by. In verse 32, to the other side, to the other side, the law, the doctrine, passed by, oh, oh no. And God told me, he said, concerning the church, <laughs> that what he did with Tower of Babel, he will repeat it. That they have come together and formed a clique, and now they make the rules and the norms. There is no refreshness, there is no new flow. It is what used to be should be. He says he's going to break down those walls for his name's sake and for the sake of his people. Yes, he's going to break down those walls. 
So it's important that we have that. He said he's going to break them down into fellowships. He's going to break them down into individuals that he can use as yielded verses. So that his children will be blessed. Because the God's, God's heart desire is that his children will be blessed. He is very, he knows what the enemy is. He's conscious of it and he's wondering why his children are not conscious about it. We have put self, we have put flesh in front and it is really, really, really blocking us from, from really looking at what the enemy is doing. We are not just existing here on our own without, without, without the agenda of the evil one against the harvest. So the Levites also pass by for the reason the same reason that the priests passed by. Those that the person was looking at. Those that from all expectation were supposed to be the one in charge. God said to tell his children that uh, he who takes his stance should take it let his, lest he fall. Because those that you would think that are the ones that carry everything. Very soon that thing will fail them. And those that you think that don't have weight, those that you think are not popular, will take center stage because he has an agenda for the end time. So it's either the earlier we start aligning ourselves to the move of the spirit, the better it's going to be. And in verse 33, but a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. A certain Samaritan. Hallelujah. Where are the Samaritans? A certain Samaritan. It doesn't matter his title. It doesn't matter where he's coming from. A certain Samaritan. In the eyes of everyone, he's just a certain Samaritan. He, the, he, he, he does not have a temple where he, he rose. He does not have congregation. But a certain Samaritan came along and had compassion. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, I thank you. This is God's plan. He is about to use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. A certain Samaritan. I don't know the Samaritan I'm talking to, but I'm telling you that as long as that thing is a burden to you, God is about to use you. God is about to use you to win souls to his kingdom. You are the one he is looking for. People might call you a certain, but God is calling you a Samaritan. We don't hear about the priests. We don't hear about the Levites, but we hear about the Samaritan. The story is a good Samaritan. Hallelujah. I can dwell on this because it is flowing. Yes, a certain and the eyes of men yes a certain the person does not know scripture back to back but as he is a certain samaritan he had compassion yes and there are many people don't believe in that person but that person came and had compassion that people that have judged that person people have have passed um um judgment on that person but that person had compassion that person carried jesus that person understand understood the flow had the flow ah god could move through that person had compassion the fruit of the spirit was seen in that person glory to god he had compassion he did not stop there he went to him mm. he bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own base and brought him to an inn and took care of him oh these are the people god is in, god is injecting into the world now he's injecting them they have compassion interestingly god made me to understand that this certain samaritan some of them on even know Jesus. Some of them don't even know the Bible, but they are the ones into humanitarian work now, putting in their all. But these ones, God is paying attention to them. Yes, God is paying attention to them. Hallelujah. It is another style of evangelism. It is more than just telling people, oh, come to my church. Oh, writing their names down. It is more than that. He went to him. He poured him oil. You take care of the souls that you have won to the kingdom. Not just meeting a passerby, handing him some, some flyer. He's not going to read the flyer. Sometimes you turn your back and that flyer is on the ground. No, you've not done your part. You can go an extra mile. When you, set, when, when you just meet them by chance, you can go an extra mile. Yes, when you, with the, the Holy Spirit is a spirit. 
spirit that goes an extra mile. Hallelujah. Even if the person built the walls, oh, I don't want to hear. But when you go out of your way, because you have Christ, you can transfer Christ. Hallelujah. He went out. He took care of him. He bound his wound. He didn't stop there. He didn't stop there. Hallelujah. On the morrow, and brought him, he put him on his feet, brought him to an inn. He brought him to an inn. It didn't stop there. At that point, when you have talked to the person, you bring the person to a place where the person can be filled. Yes, you know the place. If you are not being filled, don't take another person to a place that the person will not be filled. And brought him to a place. Yes, we need to work together. If you meet that person here, what is the closest church to that person? You can take the person there. Your church might be far away. The person might not have transport fare. But show him another place that he can go we are all united we need to work together to win to win this war for souls hallelujah and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pens where is evangelism where is given there are some people that want to know there are some people that want to know about Christ but the situation their needs will not allow them. I'm not saying give everything. Well, if you have everything you give, God will reward you. But I'm saying, can't we see that the enemy is using giving to win souls? Yes. We call some people, oh, they are prophets of Baal. But they are givers. We as children of God, we have more. But we need to know evangelism should also come with giving. When you give people food and you preach, they're here. I'm not saying it's all about food. And I'm also saying that what else? The food of the Spirit. Tell them about Jesus. When you feed them, when you feed them, hallelujah, when you feed them, they will come again and they will ask, hallelujah. Let us also give as we evangelize. Very, very important. We will win these souls if we do that. Let's stop touching this thing up. Let those that have give to those that don't have. It is not a sin. It is not. He also promised that when he comes back again, when he comes back again, that anything he spent, he will give him more. I don't see any, any, any sinner that will not come to Christ when you do this. I'm saying with the little that you have, that money for luxury, with the little you have, it could be the money that will put food on someone's table. The money for you, for, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it is bad to take care of yourself. I'm just saying, oh, Paul, let's just lend a hand. It could also be the gospel, just as I rightly mentioned. Tell somebody about Christ. If the person is fed, the person will come to the knowledge of Christ. The good Samaritan. In conclusion, Jesus now asked, who do you think is the neighbor among all those people? Is the one that had mercy, the one that had compassion, the one had, that had love. We cannot preach the message of Christ without having the character of Christ. It is impossible. It is a big lie. Jesus practiced what he preached. People are preaching what they are not practicing. Be careful not to, fall, not to, not to find, your, find yourself in that place. I also want you to know that action speaks louder than by voice. People see what you do more than what you say. So make amends. In conclusion, the Samaritan, by all standard, was not what people thought. But in the eyes of God, was who God endorsed. He did not only go to him, he took care of him. He took him to a place where he can find rest. A place where he will be nurtured. As an apostle, as an evangelist, it's not about, okay, I have taught these people, let me now build a church. Your work might just be to tell people and show them the direction where they shall be blessed. It is not a crime. He gave. Give your all. Don't say it's too little. It might be something. Give. This way we will win the war over the enemy. Because for everything we refuse to do, the enemy is doing but he won't get the upper hand. God is winning. The enemy is losing. Hallelujah. God's prophetic agenda will be on next week, Saturday. Like our page. We don't want it to look as if we, we are disturbing other people. Like our page. Let us work together. God wants to build a sanctuary. It's not, it's not just about preaching. God wants us to work together. 
so that in your place you can touch people. We can work together. I will learn from you. You will learn from me. This is God's end time agenda. And I don't want you to miss out on it for any reason. At that place in your house, you can pray. And mountains will fall. You can pray your breakthrough will come. You can pray your possessions will enter your hand. You must not be, oh, who would help? God is, God, Christ died for a reason. He is with you and he wants to help you and work with you. We will win the war in the mighty name of Jesus over the enemy and over souls. God, I thank you for your word. I give you all the glory and honor. Thank you for your children. There's many that have decided, oh God, to play this thing and to share it. Oh God, everlasting Father, remember their seed that they sowed into the spread of the gospel. Oh Lord, distinguish them and set them apart for your greatness at a time like this. In the name of Jesus, anything contending in what they, what they have. As they set their mind, oh God, to win souls to the kingdom at a time like this, may their possessions enter their hands. Let judgment come upon their enemies. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Abba Father, because we know when we pray, you have answered. Take all honor and adoration. Every wall stopping your work, fighting your work, oh God, we cancel. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit flow. Let the nations understand that we need to work together for the good of those that are hurt and those that are falling victims to the enemy. God, I thank you because the enemy is losing his hold over somebody out there. In the name of Jesus, God, I worship you. I give you all the glory and honor because same time, Next week, I will see this once again. Thank you, Abba Father, for praying with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Just as I told you, we are doing healing class on the page. It's God speaking through his vessel. Like our page. Share it. Tell somebody about it. Let us walk hand in hand. And let us hear the noun word for us. I love you and hope to see you soon. See you on Monday again by 5 p.m. where we're going to be taking the healing class and praying together so that what is ours shall become ours so that we can live a life of impact. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.